So High Court Judge Seamus Wolf breaks the COVID rules and he gets a slap on the wrist. Naughty boy, don't do it again. There's one rule if you're a member of the Golden Circle and it's another rule for working class people. So Supreme Court Judge Seamus Wolf went to the Golfgate dinner along with 82 other people, along with lobbyists, journalists, politicians. After huge public uproar, Phil Hogan had to go, but Seamus Wolf just gets a slap on the wrist. Look at the difference, how people like Seamus Wolf are treated, and then the media fury over people from Oliver Bond. Now I'm not saying the rave that happened in Oliver Bond was right, but what I'm saying is, listen to the difference in tone, to how the working class are treated, to how the working class are presented in the media, to how working class rule breakers are treated, to how the rich are treated. If the government wants to complain about people breaking the COVID-19 rules, they should look at themselves. They've offered no leadership. They've discredited the health measures and no one has any faith in them after the golf gate fiasco. And Seamus Wolf is a member of Fine Gael. He was appointed Attorney General by Leo Varadkar in 2017 before he got onto the High Court and Supreme Court. He's an active member of Fianna Gael in Dublin Bay North. He advised the government on opposition bills, many of which were blocked by Fianna Gael. And the arrogance of these people, they just act as if they're untouchable and they can do whatever they like. And it's not just Fianna Gael. Do you remember before the bank bailout, Brian Cowan, the Fianna Fáil Taoiseach at the time, went golfing with Sean Fitzpatrick. Now, Cowan says they didn't discuss the bank bailout, which happened just after they played a few rounds of golf together. Well, that golfing game was very expensive for the people of Ireland, wasn't it? It cost us 64 billion and the loss of a decade out of most people's lives. But the reason Seamus Wolf and Brian Cowan and Sean Fitzpatrick will never see a day behind bars is because they're members of our ruling class. We live in a class society. It's us and them. There's the 1% at the top, a few people who are comfortable in the middle, and most of us are at the bottom. Corruption is embedded in unequal societies. You see, corruption is a product of the fact that we have successive governments who've taken away our public services, who refuse to build public housing, who leave working class people having to beg on their knees in front of a local TD for access to a medical card or to get on the housing list. Inequality corrupts. And then all the companies are on their knees in front of the same TDs looking for a handout from the state. When COVID-19 hit, the first thing the government did was throw millions at the private hospitals. And who owns the private hospitals? Dennis O'Brien, Larry Goodman, the billionaires. Every big company in Ireland, from those owned by Dennis O'Brien and Larry Goodman, to Cement Roadstone Holding, has been built at the expense of the taxpayer and through bribery of politicians and taxpayer funds. In 2010, the think tank Task did a map of the Golden Circle. They looked at who sits on the board of directors of all the Irish companies, both public sector and private sector. They found that 39 people held 93 directorships on the 33 biggest companies in this country. 39 people had 93 seats on the boards of different companies. But not only that, outside of the biggest companies, they had 398 other seats. So 39 people had 93 directorships on the boards of the biggest companies and 398 directorships on the seats of other companies. 39 people are at the heart of a web of control in this country. And it's not just control of the private companies, it's control of the public sector too. 25% of the people in the director network who sit on the boards of all these big companies, 25% of them are on the boards of public companies too. So they're at the top of the HSE and at the top of a private bank. 50% of all directors have at some time sat on the board of a public company which is usually given to you by political appointment by Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael. Anglo-Irish Bank, before it went down, was at the heart of this web. Take one example, Sean Fitzpatrick, Brian Cowan's golfing buddy. He was on the board of Anglo-Irish Bank on the remuneration 
the pay board of Smurfy and Green Corps. He was also on the board of the Dublin Docklands Authority. And this web of connections between the tops of the private sector and the tops of the public sector in Ireland has them embedded into the two big right wing parties, Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. And the members of those parties are rewarded when they leave political office. It's no coincidence that Brian Hayes was at the golf gate dinner. Ex Fine Gael politician who's now a lobbyist for the banking sector. And then the Kenny, when he quit as Taoiseach, got a job with Venture Wave Capital, a vulture fund. And our friend Brian Cowan, he got a job from Dennis O'Brien on the board of Topaz when Dennis O'Brien owned Topaz. There is a small, tightly knit web of people who control all the wealth in this country and control the political system. Now I am for electing a left government, but this web of ruling class people who control us, this golden circle also extends into the top of the civil service, the heads of the police, the judges as we've seen, and the heads of the army. When you form a left government, you walk in to the Department of Finance and you meet civil servants like top civil servant Martin Fraser, and you present him with your manifesto and he translates it into a programme for government. A right-wing economist who's embedded in the ruling class and mates with the likes of Leo Radker. He's going to tell your left-wing government what's possible or not possible. So as long as a left government is just about sitting on top of that machine, a machine full of little Fianna Fallers and little Fianna Gailers, that left government is either going to be corrupted or sabotaged. And so in the end, if we want change in this country and we want to get rid of the golden circle and share the wealth out so that everyone in this country, every child has an opportunity to be what they should be and what they can be, then we're going to have to rebel against the golden circle. And it'll take more than just votes to do that. It'll take people power on the streets.